Hi, I'm Tony Hill. And I'm Paul Salfin. And you're watching Sports Plus Chicago. The Chicago Bears pack their bags, they head to Lambeau Field to play the Green Bay Packers. And what most people would thought would be a war based on all the history and tradition with this team and both teams, well it turned out to be a party for the Green Bay Packers. A party that pretty much was hosted by their big time quarterback Aaron Rodgers and some of their celebrities, Jordy Nelson, Eddie Lacy, uh, you name it, they were there and the only people not enjoying this party the Chicago Bears and you know Paul I mean this is tough you know when I've watched these guys mm -hmm. play I'm always looking for a really really tough physical game and this time you know as a wide receiver I, I feel like Jordan Nelson was given tickets by the Chicago Bears not to score I mean that's how poorly they played and Jordy said I'm not taking the bribe <laughs> what, yeah. what are your thoughts about that you know it, it was such a tough game and very hard to watch you know Aaron Rodgers threw six touchdowns in the first <laughs> half and that, that just kind of sets the pace through six touchdowns I mean I would have thought the Bears gave him six touchdowns <laughs> as opposed to throw two touch I mean six touchdowns but it was perhaps an outstanding performance by Green Bay and in my opinion probably the worst performance I've seen in a, uh, from the Chicago Bears. Yeah, I mean, what is going on with the Bears this season? I mean, they're they're three and six. They're fourth place. They're 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 hurting right now. <laughs> well, you know, when the Bears have turnovers, mm -hmm. they don't do very well. As a matter of fact, they they lost a turnover ba turnover battle. The, they had three turnovers. Cutler had two interceptions. They had a fumble, which is not good. Uh, third downs, they were three for twelve. You're never going to win when you're three for twelve. Fourth down, they were zero for four. I mean. When you go for fourth downs, I mean, you, you got to at least have a 33% or at least a 25% yeah. chance of, uh, or, or completion record. And in this particular case, they were 0 for 4, so they were zeroed out. And from the standpoint of, of running the ball, Forte, you know, this guy's a player. I, I yeah. think they got to put the ball in his hand and let make things happen. I'm, I'm watching the game. Martellus Bennett is dropping passes. You would think that he was on the take. Uh, Mar uh, Brandon Marshall had an outstanding game. He's a guy you got to throw the ball to without a question. And he performed. He had eight catches for over 100 yards, but most of those were just meaningless catches. And then Jeffries, I saw him drop passes that's just not prototypical mm -hmm. of, of, of Jeffries. This is not the Chicago Bears team that I'm sure the folks in Chicago want to see or hear about. Yeah. Now, obviously, you've got the ring. You were on the, the winning side of things. <laughs> but, yeah, I know you've been in hard games like that. Does that really just take the wind out of the sails when you get hit that hard? Well, this is one of those games the sails never went up. Yeah. You know, this is one of the games you're out there in the water, and you think you're in a race, and you can't get a crew to put up the sails. And that's what happened. I mean, Chicago got smacked from the beginning of the game. Aaron Rodgers threw six touchdowns in the first half. Jordy Nelson catches two passes that if you were in Dallas, you could not have caught, caught, caught Jordan Nelson. He was that wide open. I mean, there were breakdowns, middle breakdowns, and from a coach's standpoint, he's got to be pretty devastated from this performance. Yeah, well, and also now they're starting to be the subject of a lot of memes. <laughs> I'm sure you saw the one that your Sports Plus counterpart, Dennis McKinnon, sent out. It was the picture of uh, Jay Cutler with Stevie Wonder's head on his body. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> speaking of Dennis, right now, I'm, I'm sure Dennis would, would like to be playing. Well, he probably won't want to play with this team. I mean, I, you know, I love Chicago. Chicago and I love what's happening. I love Chicago sports. I mean, mm -hmm. I really do love Chicago sports. But right now, this team is really, really has an all-time low. Uh, in, in terms of their performance from a defensive standpoint, from the secondary, they were terrible. As far as the linebackers, and I love Lance Briggs. I think this guy's a beast. They're talking about a Hall of Fame type of player. But he didn't play very well as well. And, and then you're talking about the defensive line. The only defensive line that performed for the Chicago Bears was Julius Peppers, and he was on Green Bay. So, you know, what is that? How do you sum up a performance by the Chicago Bears? Actually, the performance was, was best summed up by the coach, Mike McCarthy, where he says, and I quote, shoot, I don't really have a whole lot to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, 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 let, let's talk about the Chicago Bears and who they've, who's, who they've got to play. Yes. They got the Vikings coming up. They're four and five, so mm -hmm. there should be some type of relief. I mean, Teddy Bridgewater is, is still a young quarterback over there, and he's still 
kind of soaring as though trying to figure out what's going on. So there's some relief there. And then they got the Bucks, the lonely Bucks. Perhaps would probably be a pick 'em game the way the Chicago Bears are playing. I mean, Chicago Bears record is three and six, and the Bear Bucks are one and eight. But at that point in time, it could be pretty close. You never know. And then they've got the Lions, and and, and the Lions are seven two, and and they've got you know Megatron is back, and this guy's making big plays. And you know if Jordy Nelson's going to have a great game, you can only imagine what Megatron will have. And then all, believe it or not, the Cowboys are on the schedule. And I heard from a little birdie that the Cowboys say, can we play the Bears now? I mean, <laughs> why do we have to wait? There's one of those scenarios over there. Oh, I know. I, I know the Cowboys would be happy to be 8-3 <laughs> and three right about now. <laughs> well, the Cowboys, the Cowboys are playing exceptionally well. But the key thing is that I think for the Bears, they've got to go home and regroup. They've got to find out, you know, what can they do? I mean, they haven't played well at home. I mean, matter of fact, they're struggling at home, and obviously on the road, they're not doing too well as well. So they've got to find a, a, a common denominator, you know, a, an even mix about this ball club. And perhaps I got to think in the future, we got to see a lot of Forte. Uh, Matt Forte is going to have to carry the ball probably 30 and 35 times. One, to slow down other teams and keep them off the field, and two, just to keep them in the game. And that's something hard for me to say. When you talk about a team of the Chicago Bears who has Brandon, uh, Brandon Marshall and you have Jeffries, you have Martellus Bennett. I mean, you've got great wide receivers and Forte can catch the ball at the backfield. But throwing the ball has just not been good for Jay Cutler. Yeah, and there are some people that are just calling for a complete clean of the house. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> which I know is, uh, you, you've been a, a part of these kind of things before. I mean, what, what is that like when people start blaming things from top to bottom? And it may, it may not be just a problem on the field. Well, I wish I could really address that. I really haven't been a part of that scenario. I mean, <laughs> you know, I, we, You're we, on the we good had team. a lean. We had one lean year while I was with the Cowboys, and and pretty much, you know, anything goes in the Dallas area. But you know, when you look at look at Green Bay, uh, you look at Randall Cobb, who, who's fumbled the ball, made a poor play, then all of a sudden he makes a fantastic, probably one of the best one hand grabs mm -hmm. I've ever seen. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it was incredible, and and. Uh, for him to perform exceptionally well. Eddie Lacy, I mean, here's a guy who can probably get you three and four yards of crack, but he had a 53-yard touchdown. I mean, when he scores a 53-yard touchdown, I can go out there and run and get a 53-yard touchdown. Nothing negative up against the Bears. I just want to give you some insight. They're going in the wrong direction. And, Paul, on that note, as opposed to us going to sleep like everybody did in Chicago, we're going to end it right here with a pleasant thought. There's always next week. We'll see you next week on Sports Plus. Sports Plus is brought to you by Bittenhausen Automotive. It's better at Bettenhausen. It really is better at Bittenhausen. Hi, I'm Paul Salfin, and this is the 2015 Dodge Durango RT. Let's take a look at the exterior. First of all, these tail lamps. These are LED racetrack tail lamps that include 192 individual LEDs blended to form one seamless ribbon of glowing red light. And the wheels. You can choose from six available wheels to give your ride just that look you want. The available 5.7 Hemi V8 engine produces best-in-class power, 360 horsepower, and 390 pound-foot of torque. The available Uconnect 8.4 AN system with navigation makes it easy to find your next adventure with 3D graphics and detailed maps. And the class-exclusive 7-inch gauge cluster display can show digital or analog gauges, turn-by-turn -turn navigation, and more. This is the 2015 Dodge Durango RT, starting at $29,995 and available at Bettenhausen because it's better at Bettenhausen. You're back on Sports Plus. My good buddy Paul Salvin is going to Chicago to hang out with the boys at Bentonhausen Automotive. Hey, Paul, I've never had a chance to be out there. I know they really want a real receiver out there because they got Dennis McKinnon <laughs> out there. But that's okay. You know, it's all right. I mean, hey, sometimes you just take what you can get. But, you know, tell me a little bit about it because I know the automobiles have a lot more class. Uh, oh. I didn't say that about you, Dennis. <laughs> you know, I love it up there. In fact, uh, right outside of Chicago is Tinley Park. And what a beautiful place. If I was looking for a nice place to raise a family and get out of town, that's where I would go. <laughs> and That's it, where you would go to raise a family? At Tenley Park, Illinois, absolutely. Man, it must be nice out there. It's a beautiful place. Well, now, now, let's talk about it. you got Steve McMichaels who's hanging out with you guys, and 
Dennis McKinnon mm -hmm. hanging out with you guys. They're obviously not hanging out in that part of town. Is that correct? Because you said a nice place to live. Is that correct? <laughs> yeah, actually, I have nothing bad to say about those guys. They are yeah. absolutely fantastic. I like how he put that back on me. Hey, yeah. Dennis and Steve, <laughs> it's all good. You know, we don't have to play anymore. I'm in Dallas. You're in Chicago. Love you guys. But let's talk about Bittenhouse and Automotive. Yeah. I mean, some of the cars they've got out there. I mean, I've, I've heard they got a great, I mean, a great place. And I look forward to going out there soon. Oh, you should. And they've got Fiats that are just uh, really cool. You know, I'd never considered a Fiat before, and then I sat in one. Because, you know, they look like little cars. And, you know, I you know. mean, they look like little cars? <laughs> they are little cars. <laughs> okay. But, you know, when you get in there, and I've got long legs. I mean, I'm not quite as tall as you, but, you know, I fit in there pretty well. And it, it's kind of like those Mini Coopers. You know, they're, they've got more room than you actually think that they would have. Uh, but even better, they got the Alfa Romeos, and they're the first dealership in the U.S. to get the, the little sign up, and, and it's, those things are beautiful. Well, you know, the thing I like about Bentonhausen is that our motto and our slogan is it's better at Bentonhausen. There's and no question is. in my mind, based on what, you've, what I've seen mm -hmm. and what you've told me and the cars, I think you're talking about, you know, and you talked about the Alfa Romeo, but I think there's a, another vehicle that they're, they're, they're going to they're gonna break out. Is that correct? Oh, yeah. I, they've, got, they've got so much stuff up there. In fact, if there's anything that you're looking for, we're going to be at Bettenhausen Chrysler for our next show. So I'm, I'm going to have my eyes peeled because I'm actually in the market for a new car right now. So I may actually be driving home. Wow. You know, I, I never thought about going to the Windy City and driving a car back <laughs> Bettenhausen. But perhaps it would be a great marketing material. I mean, when we're talking about, because again, I'm, I'm being funny, of course, but we, we talk about all the success that Bentonhausen has had. I mean, they've got a great group of people that work for them. I mean, they've got an outstanding customer base. And of course, the reason that we're involved with them, we're always, we're, we're sports first, but we're first class all the way. And that's why we're with Bentonhausen. Absolutely. So when you come up there, I'm going to take you to a place called Ed and Joe's. They've got a taco pizza. <laughs> and a taco pizza? A taco pizza. And I kid you not, it is amazing. In in fact, I don't know why we don't have a good taco pizza here in Dallas, but it's it's fantastic. The food's great there, the people are great there, and I love it up there. It it, I, it is better at Bettenhausen. Well, there you have it. It's better at Bettenhausen, and we'll be right back with more Sports Plus. And hey, welcome back to Sports Plus. And you know I love going to the movies, and this week I've got a great one for you. It's called Foxcatcher, and it's opening limited this week, and then it's coming to our fine town and beyond that after that. Do you know much about this film? You know, I do. I know that Channing Tatum's in the movie. So <laughs> Is that all you need to know? Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> all right, great. So the film does start Channing Tatum. Uh, however, the real accolades are coming for Steve Carell. Now, everyone knows him as kind of the funny guy, but he is not funny at all. Kind of funny looking, but not yeah. funny at all in this. The makeup was great. The makeup is great yeah. for this one. He's really, really creepy and intense. And uh, also Mark Ruffalo. He's great in this one as well. Now, the story centers around John DuPont of the DuPont family, who famously murdered, well, I won't say which character in case the story is new to you, but he murdered one of the characters and died in prison. And it's a, just a really, really strange story that he became very paranoid and strange and disconnected. And it's a very, very sad story. However, very well done. And I got a chance to talk to the director, Bennett Miller, who has done a few movies I know you know of, Moneyball. Yes, yeah. Moneyball. And he got the Academy Award nomination for Capote. Oh, so really? He is a fantastic director and a really cool guy. So let's take a look at Foxcatcher. Do you have any idea who I am? If some rich guy calls you on the phone, I wanted to speak with you about what you hope to achieve. What do you hope to achieve, Mark? I want to be the best in the world. Good. All right, well, congratulations on the film. This one is, is fantastic. It's such a stunning story. When you first heard about this, were you, were you thinking this, this would make an amazing movie? Do you have that, that mind where you're already thinking about that stuff? Well, I did not know about the story when it happened. For some reason, uh, I missed it. But eight years ago, a stranger approached me uh, in a store and handed me an envelope that contained newspaper clippings about this story. And 
uh, a month later, I'm throwing stuff out, and I re open it up and I read one of these stories. And yes, it's the only time it's happened before, but I, uh, the first article, I just thought, oh, this is something, this is something I want to do. Wow, a stranger in a store. That's, <laughs> that's interesting. Did you ever figure out who the stranger was? Yeah, yeah. No, he, I, he gave me his information and okay. he was involved, you, you know, with, with some of the people. Good. Well, you have such a fantastic cast in this film. And how did, how did you know Steve Carell would be so perfect for this? Yeah, he's especially creepy. Um, you know, nobody expected John DuPont to murder anybody. And it was important to have an actor who you do not expect is going to do what he does. And I met Steve, and we sat and we talked through the whole thing. We talked about the movie, and we talked about the character. And he, he revealed what I think we all have a sense of anyway, is that comic actors often have a side of themselves that remains guarded, that you don't really share. And often there is an understanding of some of the things that are exhibited in this role. And Channing Tatum and Mark Ruffalo are also fantastic in it. And, and I, I know Channing Tatum especially probably also deserves such a great chance to show how much more he can offer. He, you know, I, I offered Channing the role eight years ago. And it just took that much time to get the movie made and, you know, to, and to get it out. But I saw him in a film called Guide to Recognizing Your Saints, and you know, he was amazing. And I thought, oh, this guy is, this guy is just the, an extremely talented, electric actor. And I assumed his career was going to go one way, but uh, very quickly he started taking on roles that were very different from that. And this is more of a return to uh, the kind of thing that he had begun with. Now, I know there's a lot of Oscar buzz on this film, and, and you've been through this whole thing before. What, what is that whole process like for you? It's, it's, it's about ap appreciating it for what it is and not making it into something that it's not. And it's, it's nice when people, especially your peers, like your film and appreciate the work. Uh, and that can be taken as an encouragement, and it is. Um, but to blow it up beyond that is, I think, uh, perilous. Yeah, because yeah, it's an interesting process, and I guess it started with uh, Cannes Film Festival getting the best director. So I mean, that's, that's got to be a, a good sign. Makes you, makes you feel good, like instantly validated for the film, right? Yeah, it makes you feel good. Yeah. That's, that's a good way of putting it. It makes you feel good for a moment. And um, then you go back to, you know, uh, it's a laundry day. <laughs> and we always ask people their Hail Mary moment, the moment in their career where they just kind of had to go for it and it worked out for them. What do you suppose that was for you? I, you know, I, I've, had a, I've had a few. I've had a few. But about 20 years ago, um, I was right on the edge of deciding to throw in the towel. And everything that I had attempted to do up until that moment had resulted in some kind of um, frustration or unsatisfying. And I, I made a decision that um, it wasn't going to work if I was pursuing anything that required permission. And so I found a subject uh, with whom I could make a documentary portrait and was not going to require the assistance of anybody or anything. That it wasn't going to really cost any money to make. And, and that was the moment I said, before I quit, I'm going to do one thing that I'm proud of, and that's a, a documentary film called The Cruise. Well, also, I wanted to ask you about um, any advice you might have for directors, because I know, you know, like you said, you almost gave up, but 
it's, it's a tough business. I think the hardest thing is um, finding your voice. And the only way that you can do that is by doing it. And uh, filmmaking ordinarily requires um, cooperation of a small society of people to do it. And so my advice to anybody would be to find the conditions, no matter how small, to um, discover what it is that you do, you know, to find your voice uh, and then grow from there. Well, uh, congratulations on the film and we're, we're very proud of the film and, and look forward to seeing you during Oscar season. Well, thank you. Well, what do you think? Because I know, I know you're probably going to go just for Channing Tatum alone. And don't get me wrong, he's great in this, but the film itself is fantastic. You need to see it. Absolutely. I'm def that's definitely going to be a movie that I go and see, for Good. sure. And you're going to be hearing a lot about it coming for awards season. And I'm already starting to get the Oscar screeners. So this tis the season to see some great films. And Foxcatcher is definitely one of those. So stay tuned. We're going to be back with more on Sports Plus next. Sports Plus is brought to you by Bittenhausen Automotive. It's better at Bettenhausen. It really is better at Bittenhausen. There's so many great things here in Tenley Park, and one thing that we really, really love to highlight it's the good stuff that goes on. Hey, you can watch the rest of the news for all the bad news. But right here, we've got some good news. So we're joined by Chuck Okresik from the Tinley Park Food Pantry. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, we are uh, an independent, non-denominational uh, organization, which is located in the lower level of the Tinley Park United Methodist Church. We are a qualified 501c3 organization, so donations that we receive, of course, are eligible for IRS uh, deductions. We are uh, affiliated with the Greater Chicago Food Depository. Uh, a lot of people have heard about them. I, I know uh, they do some great work in the Chicagoland area. We've been affiliated with them for uh, quite some time, and in that uh, process of doing that, we are able to buy food from them at a very low cost. We get federal food through them at no cost. And, uh, that we, right now we're getting 2,500 pounds of food every month. Wow. At no cost? At no cost. To That's the, the fishes the and loaves. Right. And, uh, mm -hmm. and we bu we're able to buy food from them a couple of times a month. Uh, we are supported uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, in other means also, not just through the Greater Chicago Food Depository, but we're supported locally by school drives, churches, and charitable uh, organizations contribute to us. Uh, not only food-wise, but also uh, monetarily. We have uh, some retail uh, businesses in town that uh, will support us with what I call their extras. Mm -hmm. uh, the post office has an annual drive in May. There are people in the community that know we're running a food pantry. And they literally go to the store, buy a couple bags of groceries, and drop them off at our location, knowing that we'll redistribute them to people who come to us. Great. Nice. Now, Chuck, how can we help out, and how can the audience at home help out? Well, we always have uh, the, the need for more food. Our, the people that we're feeding right now are about 65 families, which amounts to about 235 or 240 people in those 65 families. We're only open on Wednesdays uh, at our location. Uh, we're open from 8 to 1.30, and we serve the people <coughs> in the Tinley Park and Orland Hills area. Uh, so any contributions that uh, can be dropped off at our location, and we do have a drop-off box that's available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, it's about a three-foot cube, so it, it holds a fair amount. We check that every day. And uh, we, any cash contributions that we get, uh, we make local purchases as well as getting uh, donations from people. So uh, those are uh, certainly appreciated by anybody that could support us. Oh, that's really great. You know, uh, I think we're going to have to go by there. I've actually <coughs> been able to do some volunteer work. And one of the things they always tell you is it's not just the food you need. What are some of the items that you really, really need? Well, uh, we do have a priority list of things that seem to uh, 
go quicker than others. We use any, any food uh, item that uh, you would use in your own home, but the priority items that seem to go quicker than others are cereals, cookies and crackers, uh, cake mixes, we include brownie mixes, muffin mixes, instant potatoes, the box kind or the kind in what I call an envelope, uh, hamburger helper items to include uh, rice-a-roni, pasta-roni, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Boxed pasta, other than spaghetti. We certainly would accept spaghetti, but we seem to get a lot of spaghetti. And uh, the other items go a little bit more quickly. And then lastly, I would uh, say on the priority list would be a juice, uh, any yep. kind of a drink, in a 12-ounce container to a 64-ounce container of any kind, whatever that might be. What can people leave at home? Maybe fruit cakes? <laughs> What's something that, that, that no one wants? That no one wants? Yeah. Uh, we have a, we had a difficult time getting rid of black eyed peas. There you go. Oh, hey, right. what's 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 it's, actually, it's, it's, actually gotten, it's actually gotten better and we do get those through uh, the Greater Chicago Food Depository. And we're glad to get all of those items because uh, they give us a, a, a nice widespread assortment of things to choose from. So when folks come to us. I can tell you beets and Brussels sprouts is probably on that list. <laughs> and That's anchovies. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this is another one. But I'm surprised you didn't say canned meats. Yeah. Like spam and ham and you mean that are difficult to get rid of? Yeah, yeah. No, no, they're not. No, difficult. that's what I'm saying. You were saying what you goes fly, flying off faster. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you asked me what was difficult to get yes, rid of. Uh, yes, no, I'm yes. talking about okay. the first because, question. Because okay, the, yeah. the canned meats, uh, yes, uh, they are an item that people like. Yes. Mm. And we, we have those now. At this time of the year our inventories have run quite low. We we get most of our food in uh, let's say from the middle of November through the end of January. So from the beginning of February, we just keep dipping into our inventories, and by the time we get to this time of year, uh, things are getting uh, low. It's not that we don't have food, but uh, our supplies are getting quite low, so we really look forward to the uh, replenishment of those inventories. And because our, uh, the number of people that we handle right now has increased to 65, that has also uh, depleted our inventories more than typically. So. Yeah. Yeah, we did a food drive at my sports bar around Christmas, and they love those big tubes of sausage that you don't have to refrigerate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Well, we're definitely going to have to keep that in mind, especially now that the holidays are coming up. And uh, everybody, please keep that in mind because there's the Tenley Park Food Pantry. Chuck, thank you so much for being with us. Appreciate it. All you're the welcome. good work you're doing. Thank, thank you. you. That's all for Sports Plus this week. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Sports Plus Show. That's right. You can find Paul and myself right here on Sports Plus.